Hello and welcome to ZimDocs. I'm Dr. Abtract. In this ZimDocs we're going to take a look at the bitmap class. So let's go to Zim now at zimjs.com, click on Docs, type in bit, hit enter, and we come on down, it's not very far, to the bitmap class right here, one of the display uh, objects. So we tend not to make a new bitmap from a new bitmap call. Instead, we load in our bitmaps, which are images, as assets. So most of the time, we're loading it in through either the load assets or right in the frame parameter. I'm going to show you that that there's a, a frame, sorry, call with a an assets parameter. I mean. Uh, there are other things we can do with bitmaps that are, are listed here. Here's, for instance, making a raw bitmap, an empty bitmap in a sense, and filling it with noise using image data. So that gets a little advanced. We don't need to go into that. Here's applying a filter to a bitmap. So when you do that, you need to cache it after. So you make some uh, bitmap filters. There's a variety of filters you can apply to make it blur, for instance. And then we uh, cache that and center it, and you'll see a blurred bitmap. Uh, here is an example of getting a color of a bitmap underneath a pixel. So you can use some canvas code to be able to do that. And here's loading in a bitmap from base64. So these are th some things that have come up in the past. But for the most part, you're not using those. You are using uh, just uh, an asset. So let's drop into some code and show you how we normally would get a bitmap onto the screen. Here we have a bitmap over here in the docs, assets, uh, a logo. Now this logo, you can't see it too well there, but we'll see it later. It was a sort of prototype logo for Zim before the Zim 10 launch. It ended up sticking around in the bottom of the docs <laughs> on this capture. So we're treating this, this bitmap as uh, the sort of the docs version of Zim logo. All right, and we'll go back into our bitmap here, our, our, our uh, Zim page here. We're bringing in 10.3.0, create JS, and down below we have nothing. Shall we see nothing? I'll open that up in a browser. Ladies and gentlemen, nothing up our sleeves. So what we want is to get a bitmap to be there, or in other words, an image to be there. Um, CreateJS has this thing called PreloadJS, which was a whole library and a whole sort of system of bringing in uh, queues and all this kind of stuff, and we found that a little complex. So what we do is this, we say bar, we don't have to set a bar for it, but we're going to pass it in as the next parameter here, and since we're passing in all these parameters as var, we may as well do this one too. Var assets. Uh, if you only have one asset, you can use a string just like this. You could say logo.png. If you have more than one asset, then you would put that in square brackets, like so. You're welcome to use square brackets as well. Var path, here's the path to it. If you wanted to, you could throw the path right onto the beginning of that and say assets slash. But uh, then later on, when we refer to it, we would have to refer to it as this whole path. And so what we often do is uh, put the path down here in another parameter. And then you can have a bunch of uh, images or sounds or whatever in there. Now, if you do have multiple folders, you, you may have to re reconfigure that a little bit. You can do multiple loads. Uh, there's only one path per load, unless you put the path on each one. All right, so down in here now, we collect as the next parameter the assets. And then the next parameter is the path, like that. There is a loader as well. If you're loading assets, sometimes you want uh, the next parameter to, to use the next parameter, which can either be a, um, a waiter, which is three little dots that go dot, dot, dot. If you don't have much to load, use a waiter. But if you do have a lot to load, you're welcome to use the preloader, I think it's called. Uh, it's a class in Zim that uh, gives you dot, dot, dots. Or no, more than dot, dot, dots. Gives you a percentage if you want percentage and a line that you know pays attention to how much is loaded and how much not. But anyway, we won't bother with that. And down below, we want to then show our asset, which we access through the frame dot asset and then the name of the asset, which was logo.png. So that simplifies it a fair bit, and we'll center that on the stage. 
we're just specifying what assets we want to load. Here they are. And then when those assets are ready, we can get going. Now, if this, if you have many bitmaps and you're not even going to really load, like load them all, maybe the user isn't going to see part of your application, and so why load all those bitmaps first? Then you can separate this out, and you can use the frame dot load assets right in here. You can say frame dot load assets, and for a while this was the only way that you could do it in Zim, and you would pass in basically the assets and the path uh, right in here. When that is complete, you'd have a complete event. You would go frame dot on complete, complete, and you would call a function. And at that point, you know you have all of your, your assets here ready. So this used to be the way that we would do it all the time, but it was a bit of a pain in the neck because we, we'd have this function. We'd have to throw all this stuff in there. So our whole app would be inside of this, and you'd end up with two of these guys at the bottom. It was just a little bit more complicated. So, uh, but it did allow you to load your assets uh, at different times, sort of asynchronously, rather than having your app wait for all of your bitmaps to be ready. But if you just got a few bitmaps, usually it doesn't take long to load, and you're welcome to do it this way. Once again, you can add a little waiter in there or a uh, progress bar. Okay, so let's see it work. We save that up. Have we viewed this in a browser yet? Yeah, we saw nothing and we refresh and there's a Zim, cool. And once that's there, it acts like any other asset. You can dot drag it. Now just be careful with the dot drag uh, or even a press of this if we refresh here. I can drag this, but look, I can't drag it in the empty spaces. So if you want to be able to drag in the empty spaces, probably the easiest way is to expand this. What expand will do is it, it adds 20 pixels and it makes the whole area of it uh, clickable. So, or interactive, so we'll refresh that. Now this whole area, including though 20 pixels above and next to it by default. If you want it back to expanding of zero, then that um, doesn't expand anything and we refresh here and now there it is but if I go up a little bit it's gone so that, that would be probably in the bitmap itself all right so uh, there you go but like I said um, once that's there you can then transform if you want transform uh, that as well and we refresh here refresh and there we've got zim transform on that. So it's uh, like anything in Zim, hit tests, etc. Any any of the Zim fourth methods, all those methods you can uh, place on this asset. You're also welcome to store that in a variable. Var logo is equal to, uh, if you want, you can then say logo dot center, etc. Uh, but you're also welcome to work right with the frame dot asset. If you can do everything there, uh, so be it. But, uh, like I said, you're, you can store that. You can also store it in a variable and still chain it because all of these things return the asset itself. So this returns the asset, all these things do, and therefore it gets returned into logo. So after you can still do something like logo.help or alpha if you want to set the property is equal to 0.4 or something, and then you'll get a logo of 0.4. If you wanted to do a rollover on the logo, you don't need to drop out and do all that alp stuff. You can do a dot hub, dot hub. And in zim dot hub, I can't remember how it works. It's something like 0.8 or something. Let's just see. I think what this does by default, there's a couple different things it can hub. Uh, the alpha is one of them. Let's do one that's a bit more obvious start at 0.5. So this should start at 0.5 and when we hover over it, it will, you well, know, that didn't work. Take off the transform on that for a sec. Uh, maybe look up in the docs, the, the, the dot hub. Uh, whoop, we refresh here. Oh yeah, there it is. Uh, the transform seemed to bring up the alpha on that. I'm not sure exactly uh, why that is. We might look into it. So there we are. But the rollover went the wrong way, didn't it? <laughs> so you might want to, when we hover over it, uh, set that to a 1.help.5, something like that. I wonder if now the transform would work properly. So there it is, and as we roll over it, and if you want to 
uh, click on that, then you can go a dot tap. And dot tap would then take you to somewhere. So in the dot tap, you would put a function and as a go uh, zim http colon slash slash zim js dot com, something like that. And all of these things, if they get too long, your chaining gets too long for you, you can uh, drop them down as well. Boop. Or any number of them down. Okay, so in this case, you see what's happening. We don't even need the variable because we we did it all with chaining. So it just becomes something like that. If we're not too sure about the scale, we can dot ska. If we still want it centered, it's always best to cent uh, center it after you scale it. Um, otherwise, it centers it, then it scales it, and might not be centered anymore. So scale point um, three or something like that. Uh, I believe that the re refresh here, there it is smaller, roll over it, click, and off it goes to Zim uh, in the same window. If we want it in an underscore blank, that's the next parameter here, underscore blank, like that. Uh, that would then open that up in a new window. Anyway, blah, 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 blah. And so now we're in a new window with this uh, working like so. That is us using a bitmap. So you see what I mean? We don't make a new bitmap anywhere. We just bring in the assets. And it's really not that difficult. It's nice to have your at control of your assets to know when they're here. In traditional HTML, I know we just make an image tag and they kind of show up there. But they load in at different times. And it may be that you, uh, when you're doing interactive media, you need to know when your assets are there and when people can start using them and stuff like that. So it's best to have it in this route where, hey, we won't even begin until our assets are there. Or indeed, we could do that with some assets, and then later on we could load bitmaps um, at uh, later and find out events when they're all there. We can find out the event when each single one loads in and do something as each asset loads in. Uh, that's a neat way to make a progress bar. For instance, we might have a bunch of pictures and the progress is actually based on how many of those pictures have loaded. And as soon as one picture loads, you can place it. And then when the next one loads, you say, hey, I have an event, we can place it. Um, so having that uh, type of control over your bitmap loading is, is most excellent. A couple other things you can do with bitmaps that we didn't really talk about. Um, one good thing, oh, desktop reveal, whoop, whoop, whoop. Uh, that's always fun. I, I like it when people do a, a desktop reveal. <laughs> what, what do I want to find here? I'm looking for this, the, the documentation. You can sort of do detective work. Oh, what was going on in his desktop? Or that kind of thing. Uh, another thing that you can do with bitmaps that, that aren't shown here is you can turn any canvas into a bitmap. It's uh, The canvas has a cache canvas. So actually any shape or anything has a, 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 you can cache it. And then that gets what's called a cache canvas. It's actually kept on a, a separate ca a canvas and you can load that into a bitmap. Um, so that way it, it's treated as an image and you can save that image and all that's done as well with this thing called the loader. So if you want to save something out to a bitmap and, and, and have the user download it, check out the loader class here in the docs. The loader has a thing called a save. So loader like so. Uh, not only does it allow you to load in an image, so that's a way that you can load in an image. Oh, I'm glad we kind of came over here. So very easy to upload an image from your computer into Zim and operate on it like a bitmap. So that's a loader class, but it also allows you to save out. So on click, we can loader.save. As a matter of fact, you can save out with, you can just have an empty loader and not even put the loader on the stage and then use the loader to um, save out uh, uh, an image as well. So check out the loader. All right, I think that's good for the bitmap uh, docs here at Zim Docs. I am Dr. Abstract. Come on in to zimjs.com slash slack uh, if you want to talk about things. And we look forward to uh, seeing what you make, make with Zim. All the best. Ciao.